All right, good morning, Wasteland. Mr. G bringing you some cross out today, and today we're gonna do something a little different. We're gonna do the legendary weapon buyer's guide by Mr. G because hey, you've done your grinding, you've done all this hard work, you've got your hard earned coin, and you're hey, like you've had your purple weapons, you're gonna get your first legendary weapon. Well, these things are expensive. Let me slap some prices up there from uh, today on Cross Out DB. Looks like you'd be ranging from 2,300 coins to get yourself a harvester down to about just around 19, 1,957 coins uh, for the Reaper. So these things are expensive. So consider this your buyer's guide to legendary weapons. We're going to break down what you need or what you should have before you buy any of these, uh, how they perform, and uh, just I'm just going to review every single one of these legendary weapons because I've died horribly in builds using every single weapon in this game. You can find those all on the channel. Take a look at the build playlist. There's like 500 videos in there. I don't even know anymore, but let's get to it. Let's start off first with letter A with the aspect. Now, this is one of the more recent legendary weapons that we got in one of the last updates. Uh, the hotter this weapon is, uh, the higher its damage is. Um, its damage output isn't great. Its fire rate is decent. Its range is not great, nor is its accuracy. Also, it has the durability of wet toilet paper uh, and takes four energy. But it doesn't weigh a lot, so you're going to find people sticking these things on hover all the time. Now, this is more of a good-looking hover build than a meta hover build. Granted, if we were to run this thing... Uh, yeah, you want to cycle these at super high heat. I love that they've changed the UI to make it easier to tell. Um, your damage bonuses down there so you want to keep these things as close to overheat as possible the entire time you're using them or, you, or you're losing massive potential so you just yeah you want to just keep them cycled and it's a skill it's a skill you're going to need to learn to use you're going to see a lot of these on sideways hover builds um you're going to see them in higher power scores you don't see them tons because they're just a finicky weapon to use if you're not right 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 there the whole time you're just missing out on most of the damage potential and they just they come right off i mean take a look at this let's say look i'm gonna i'm gonna shoot at your aspect see there it is there it is not anymore it's not it's got like the durability of a cord i mean not exactly not exactly a cord but it comes right off so that's the aspect um if you really love machine guns uh give it a go i mean they are one of the more top selling weapons according to cross out uh, db right now all right, what the, used to be my favorite, uh, Reapers. Uh, we'll talk about maybe why they're not meta anymore, why they're not so much everybody's favorite anymore. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, this weapon used to have a cool special ability where like every fifth round had armor penetration of like up to two meters. Um, but now this weapon's special ability is that it doesn't overheat. Um, it used to be this thing was like just the top dog um in the top of the you know top of the top of the day back of the day it's been a while guys i'm so tired today um and then it's just subsequently got nerfed many many times but it, i mean damage is decent but it has one of the highest fire rates in the game um you're gonna need to give this weapon ammo though it used to require um heating or cooling devices which meant you were just slammed with energy if you were gonna get a reaper and it also has ridiculous recoil but this thing takes six points of energy and you're going to notice we have it on a gigantic build because reaper builds tend to be builds that are just going to slug it out with their opponent and just need to be the most massively armored things ever because you're just going to be 1v1ing guys while they shoot the crud out of you and if you can just outlive somebody with reapers and have enough ammunition you will eventually uh, win the battle if you don't get your weapons uh, stripped off which is what happens all the time with reapers is that Somebody just strips them off. You're always going to see people trying to armor these things. They're going to undermount them. They're going to surround them in armor. They're going to put them between tracks. Because that's the huge weakness. Is that with Reapers, you just got to keep them alive and going. Um, the real bonus of them, and they used to be one of my absolute favorites, is they're just so easy to use. It's just point, point and click. Um, nowadays, you can use them with an Aurora. Because now that you don't have to cool them down, um, you do have the extra energy left to slap an Aurora in with them. However... Let's say you're thinking about getting your first Reaper. You're like, yeah, I really want to try Reapers. It 
getting one just isn't worth it. You really need to have two of these guys. You could pair them with, you know, equalizer miniguns if you were only able to afford one. But they're definitely one of the legendary weapons where you're going to want to have both. By both, I mean two. You guys can tell I'm tired. I'm just, I'm not even going to edit this out, but I'm just, I'm slamming some coffee right now. Oh, there we go. That's good stuff. Okay. Hammer falls, and yes, look what you got here. You got the metal wedge, probably one of the most common popular build types out there is the six Bigfoot wheels on a wedge with Quantum Cab or Torero Cab, but it doesn't really matter be either one. We've got Hammer Falls. This thing uh, has a really cool special ability in that hits have a low chance to basically jam the enemy's weapons, and that will save your ass sometimes. It really, really will, especially if someone's got two mammoths about ready to shoot you and you jam them. It will save your butt. So these things do really good damage. Fire rates, meh. Range is really low. Accuracy, not great. And they overheat in a hurry, meaning they do pair uh, really nicely with rads or uh, coolers. They also really go extremely well with the new cab, the new favorite cab. Basically, what you're going to be doing with these is you're going to be sticking them on a wedge build and just driving up to someone and going shooty shoot and look how fast they overheat. They overheat extremely fast. So... You want to run them with coolers and a rad. And that's, that's pretty much it. They also have low durability. So they're easily stripped off your build if you... Yep. Yep. That's it. They are the legendary shotgun. They play like a shotgun. Really nothing fancy there, but they're an effective weapon if you're just going to drive right up to someone super close. And then... Can we can we shoot his gas jet? Can we shoot it? Can we shoot it? There we go. On to the next one. The Neat Hog. It is another shotgun. However, this one being a double barreled shotgun. So it takes less energy. It takes only four. It's going to shoot a lot slower. This guy's going to have a little more uh, durability than the Hammerfall. And it has this thing where the faster you're going, the faster this thing will reload. So you want to be driving this thing um, at full speed. So you're going to see these things on you know wedges just like you did uh, with the hammer falls but it's all about burst damage when you're going to run neat hogs you want to just get in you want to blow off your opponent's weapons in each round and you want to keep going you want to strafe past targets because you want to keep your reload up but your goal being to strafe past and blow off weapons while you do it uh some people love neat hogs i'm not a huge huge fan i think i would prefer the fire rate of the hammer fall because you guys all know uh, i can't aim um so i think i personally prefer the hammer fall over the neat hawk shotguns for legendary shotguns but that's just mr g personal preference nothing wrong with either one of those now cyclones these we got you know new at a few patches back as a knight's templar thing now they're they're steppenwolf i think um looking at those stats you're going oh my god look at those stats They've got lots of little white tick marks on everything. They must be amazing. Cuffy break. Okay, let's talk about Cyclones. Um, number one, don't put Cyclones on a build like this. Um, don't. Uh, it looks great, um, but it's just going to get hammered, this thing. Uh, most people you're going to see running Cyclones are going to be putting them on, on legs or Bigfoots or things that can move decently fast. So the deal with the Cyclone is... The longer it shoots, um, the higher its rate of fire. It's going to be a five energy point drain, but it's a heavier weapon, so you're not going to see it on hover, hover uh, and it's got some recoil, but it's got a little more durability than uh, some of the weapons we were looking at before. Nice thing about this formation, though, is that both these guns can fire at all angles. All right, so we got good angles set up there, but you're really not going to shine with the Cyclone uh, until you get it spooled up. About halfway it really starts speeding up and get some DPS you have to learn to cycle up your cyclones often before you even get into combat if you're gonna do these because if an enemy shows up around the corner especially at close range and you're just you're just doing this 44 44 44 50, yeah I'm sorry you're dead and someone's blowing your cyclones off you want to be have these things at full spool right around at least here um, before they're doing what they're meant to be doing. So you're going to really find they do well with radiators, anything that lets them keep shooting uh, longer. 
That's Cyclones. They're, they're just the autocannon sniper weapon. Well, one of the sniper weapons in the legendary tier. Okay, on to Helios. Not much to say about Helios. They are essentially just the plasma weapon of legendary tier. In that they have a perk where if every projectile and volley hits, you get significant damage bonus. They're easy to use. Um, if you can master the cooldown cycle, or you can use the fire all weapons exploit. Um, but they're 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 fairly easy. They have a little more range than some of the other energy weapons. Um, you can see here they do decent damage when all the projectiles uh, hit the target. Uh, I I find them easy to play. I do enjoy them. You're only going to want to put these on hover, though. They need to be on something that's fast, because they're essentially really easy to aim. They're lightweight, but they have low low durability. They're going to get blown off your build, if you're not careful. So that's the Helios. Definitely want at least three of those, if you're going to go the Helios route, which makes them spendy. On to the Spark. Honestly, if you want to get the Spark... Don't do this. I've done builds where I put three on one. You can watch them. Um, don't do that. Uh, you're going to want to just do one of these with uh, probably something at close range build like a, a goblin. Or you know what everybody does. They do harvesters. Because why? Uh, it reduces the target's movement speed and weapon reload by 50%. This is a slowdown weapon. Um, I just put three of these together in, for the sake of this video. Um, this is a weapon where you can only buy one of these and you can pair it with other things. Um, most, like I just said, most commonly you're going to see these paired with uh, harvesters because it just slows down the target and then you can blam, they're dead. You can also put them with lances, goblins, shotguns, any sort of melee weapon, anything that's really close range. Just just look at this though. Get him, get him, get him, get him. Just dead stop though. Um, but when you're playing real players at high power score, these do not... They do not do a lot of damage. Um, if you really want, just look up Triple Spark. Um, you'll find me playing it just just terribly. Um, Gromek does have a funny video where he and his friends all do these, and they have like three of them squatted up, and then that is functional. Ah, here we go. One of my favorites in the legendary category, the Tsunami. Okay, the Tsunami is your um, limited firing angle sniper cannon of uh, legendary category um it has an interesting perk every five seconds you stay still gives you a damage bonus of 20 percent. so whenever you see a battle beginning and you see all of the uh tsunami guys just parked there and you're like why aren't they moving they're stacking up their damage bonus no when tsunamis first came out before they did some nerfs to hovers you saw a lot of these on on hover and you just don't anymore because number one you can't not move in hover, so you can't even use the perk of the weapon if you stick these on hover, and they're just they're just too heavy. Um, you'll see these on Bigfoots, but you're almost always going to see tsunamis on legs because look at the firing angle of tsunamis. That's it. That's it. It's like it's like five degrees. I don't know. Watch the Suslick video, and he'll tell you the exact amount of degrees. It's not much rotation at all. But the deal with these is, is they just do stupidly good damage like 1500 damage and you can you can pop shots um, across the map with these guys I mean, just look at that they're they're really good when especially when you get them dialed in skilled players with tsunamis will ruin your day they really will and they'll do it from across the map um the, the weapons themselves have decent durability but you will want to protect them to, to some degree just to make sure that they're okay you'll notice that this is on an icebox cab um, you'll see these either with the Step Spider Cab because you get the maneuverability bonus, but the Ice Box gives that damage bonus um, to weapons with limited firing angles like the Tsunami. So those are the only cabs you're really going to want to use uh, with Tsunamis. You may see like a Quantum Bigfoot build, but like, eh, or Torero, eh. You want to see these things on Step Spider or Ice Box builds. Yeah, like the old Tsunami there. That means we are on to the next... A uh, gigantic cannon weapon. This build is totally, for looks alone, you're going to want to run mammoths on just a gigantic Bigfoot build with as many Bigfoots on it as you can get. The mammoth has a cool perk in that every time you land a shot, uh, it stacks damage bonus. They're a lot harder to aim 
Well, they're easier to aim than the tsunami, but they're less accurate. You're gonna miss shots more often with the mammoth, but the burst damage on these things is is just silly. You know, they do they do good damage, and they're tough. They probably have the most hit points of any weapon in the game. The thing just took 500 durability damage in the face and didn't die because there's a durability of over a thousand. And the damage is stupidly good, but look at the mass. 2,633 kgs. So if you put these on a build, let's just go take a look here and see what Jeff has under Mammoth King lately. Okay, he's got this one. Let's just let's just take a look at it. Um, you're going to find that even with massive builds, it's really hard to uh, get hit points. Um, even, yeah, power score 13,000. He's only got enough durability left over for 2,635. And you're going, that's a ton of durability. Well, not if you think about all the mass and armor that you could put on if you didn't have to put on the 5,000, over 5,000 kilograms that you're spending on mammoths. Does that thing have a porcupine on it? Oh, Jeff, you're evil. Jeff, you're evil. We're trying that. Um, yeah, we're, try <laughs> we're trying that at some point. Okay. Um, and it's eggplant. Okay. Well, that, we'll save that for another video. Porcupine Mammoth. Uh, okay. Moving on. We're not talking about legendaries. I mean, we're not talking about relics in this one. We're talking about legendaries, which means we are now on to Retchers. Um, you'll find these on anything that's relatively fast. They have a perk that the farther away you are, uh, the more damage you're going to do with these guys. Um, but the thing is, the farther away you are, uh, the more spread out your volleys are going to be. Basically, they're just little grenades. Like a larger volley of the GL-55 uh, Impulse. Fun, though. Fun weapon. Fun weapon. Um, they're really good for just support and area denial. I mean, you can just carpet bomb an area. But they do need some cooling, as you can see. Um, this is a nice little retro build uh, right here. So, yeah, just a quick, fast one. But, you know, as soon as this thing gets hit, it's dead. Um, all right, on to Dracos. They are a limited firing angle flamethrower. Okay, they're the poor man's uh, firebug here. They only need four energy. Uh, and they take a little while to overheat. But mostly what these weapons are going to do is they're going to heat up other parts so they take more damage from other weapons. Because by themselves, Draco's just not going to do great. It's going to pair really well with either like a spark or like a harvester something like that something that you're gonna or goblins anything that's gonna get you close to the enemy because you can see that it's heating up the parts but it's not doing that much damage uh on its own okay mandrake i'm gonna be honest with you guys um with mandrake i have very very little experience with mandrakes they're one of my least uh, favorite weapons so i'm not a good judge of character but i can talk about a few things and when i first started i was like why are people putting it on these giant Poles on their Mandrake build. I'm like, is it to armor the Mandrake? No. So it's commonly referred to as an antenna, and as you can see, it raises your camera angle significantly higher so that you can see further away. Now, Mandrakes, they're the artillery um, of Crossout, and you can dump shots across the map. They're going to leave flaming piles of napalm death that stay on the map that people can drive through and have their day ruined by. But I just do not particularly care for them because look how long it takes uh, for the shots to land um, from Mandrake. So that's it for the old Mandrake. I'm not going to spend too much time on that one. Now, Fortunes used to just, well, let me talk about the weapon. They used to really, really suck. They sucked so bad that uh, Gaijin has uh, buffed them multiple times. So they're now five points of energy and damage has just, look at the damage. It's just maxed out. Um, they do stupidly good um, damage. They really do. And they have some interesting things you can do with them. They bounce along the ground. You can bounce them over things. You can bounce them around corners. You can do a lot of fun things with them. And if you get them dialed in, you get all of them dialed in. But look at that. Look at that. They just will eat the face right off a of build. And the range on them isn't bad. You can also throw these things downhill. You can spam them all over the map. And look at them. They just bounce. And they go, and they go, and they roll, and they roll. And yeah, so people like Mr. G that struggle with aiming, I really, I really enjoy fortunes. All right, let's do one more, one more. They're a satisfying weapon um, to use, but when they first came out, they were absolutely horrible. 
Okay, well, let's talk about the uh, bonus projectile perk on these things. Um, they're tracking. They're homing. You do not technically uh, have to aim these. Um, you're going to see guys running these on hover, obviously, so they can stay far away and uh, shoot you. You're going to want to run a radar with these. This guy's got a radar detector on this particular build. This is an aesthetic build. You can see it looks like a spaceship. Um, these are, like, truly really terrible at low power scores um, if you're running one of these at low power score and you're blowing up new players you should feel bad okay because it's just doesn't take doesn't take a whole lot of skill you want to make sure you get your firing angles decent or they will miss but that's really all it is is it's a bigger version of the pyre it's a it's a homing missile um, it is one of the least expensive ones according to cross out db right now so hopefully losing some popularity there lastly certainly not least the most popular legendary weapon by far the harvester it gets a damage increase of 40 percent for every second of contact and that stacks up to five times somebody do the math on that how much more damage is that 200% more damage? I don't know, guys. It's super early. Someone check my math on that. So, yeah. We've got this thing. It's just a massive triple harvest. So you don't need triple. Double is more than enough. And then you've got energy for other stuff. But look. Just for sheer shock and awe. Let's stack that damage there. Stack it. Stack it. Look at it. Yes. Look at that damage. Let's go hit a drone with this thing. And they're easy to use. Point at targets, drive into targets, and you're done. So let's sneak up here on one of these poor little bots. God, I wish they would spawn. Um, you could choose the, you know, the size of bot you wanted to spawn. Can we catch this guy? Are we fast enough, friendo? Friendo, come, come here. Nope, nope, nope. This is an embarrassing way to end video. G, super embarrassing. We get a little speed here. Get a little speed here. This guy. He wants some. Come here, friend. Come here. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. Insta-kill. Hot knife through butter. Okay, I'm going to recap. We're going to talk about which legendary weapons are my favorite. Um, while Hurricanes are probably the most popular, I, I don't love them. I don't love to use them. Um, I do really enjoy uh, Tsunamis right up there. One of my favorites, especially when I've been playing them consistently and can aim them. I also enjoy a gigantic uh, mammoth build um, just for the burst damage. Mammoths are super fun, and you just feel like I have the biggest thing on the map uh, when you use those, which makes them fun. Um, I used to love Reapers. used to be right up there with, with one of my favorite things to play. I still love Reapers. They just don't feel like, even after the last buff, I'm like, eh, they just don't feel as awesome as they used to feel. Um, and Fortunes have an honorable mention in my heart because they're just silly, silly, spazzy weapons and you can do some serious hurt with them. Um, but you know what? We're going to we're gonna take this guy over the jump because right now Harvesters are king of legendary weapons and everybody and their brother uh, buys them and runs them. So I don't... Do they need a nerf? You guys let me know what you think uh, in the comments. Let me know your favorite legendary weapon in the comments. And if this video was helpful for you before you go out and spend... 2,000 of your hard-earned cross-out coins, please throw it a like. And if you want cross-out in your inbox every day, that's me. I'm bringing it to you daily. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And lastly, you need cross-out friends. Take a look at Discord. Link in description. I'm going to catch you guys later. Mr. G out. <laughs>